You're a party animal. You're not welcome here. Get out of here. Yeah, I'm not interested in a one-on-one date with you. I, I love you though. I think I'd invite you to a, a yeah. um, what do you Norgy. call them? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Kecker. <laughs> What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I'm Mike. And I'm Kim. And you're watching Tabletop Turtle. And today we have part three in our series, My Journey Through Miniature Gaming. My journey through yeah, miniature gaming. Yeah, exactly. For this video, I'll give you five of the, the best gateway miniature games. Mike is gonna sell me yeah, I'm gonna what sell he them. thinks are the top five miniature games. And I'll... For beginners, specifically. Yes. And I'll tell him how wrong he is. No, I'm only right. <laughs> These are the five. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> so at number five, we have Gaslands. The apocalypse is upon us. Society has crumbled, leaving only roaming gangs and motorheads that scour the wasteland in search of rare petrol reserves. To get that precious fuel, players form gangs and engage in a death race across the wasteland using movement templates instead of tape measure and tossing tons of dice to blow up the opponents. Whoever survives the arena, crosses the finish line alive, is the winner. So Gaslands is a game which I've mentioned quite a bit, mostly in the context of like it being a party game. But I think it's a really good two player game too. Like I think you'd have a lot of fun picking your little army because your army consists of just like Don't vehicles. Don't call it an army, it's cars. Yo, your gang, your street gang. But it's cool because like you can outfit them however you want. So, you know, we all of us when we were children we probably dreamed of like, what would it be like if you took a, an ice cream truck and you put on like a homing missile on the friggin' hood and then to put a Gatling gun on it. You could do that in this game. You can do whatever you want, you I, customize. I, I don't remember one thing to do that Everybody, as a kid. we all did, you did, I did. We all screamed for ice cream trucks with, with guns. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. I, I think that's a unique dream of yours. This kind of just feels like someone like loved playing with Hot Wheels kind of as a kid. A one hundred percent. Like you know, like crash. Like you know how boys are. Like they like, crash cars into each other and pretend it's a fight. He grew up and he's like, you know, what? I'll make this into a real proper game with actual pretty much. rules. Yeah, pretty much. And the best part <laughs> is that it's it's like partly it's a race too, right? Like we were talking yeah. about that before. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a war. This is a race, and yeah, there's some conflict, but it's a race at its heart. I, I, so when was the last time you saw an F1 race where they were like Well, this is like Death Race. This is like Death Race. Like bumper cars. No, this is like Death Race 2000. But like bumper cars, F1 mixture. But with more trying to kill people sometimes. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and there's other game modes too. So if like you didn't want to race, there's a game mode where you you sort of drive around and like you you try to run over zombies. And you see whoever well, can run over the most amount of zombies, that person becomes the winner. The game calls them zombies, but we they're they're just people. Come on. It's like Carmageddon, like video game Carmageddon. You get so, more points depending on who you so, run over. But in the movie cars? Yeah. Oh, so, there's nothing like cars. The movie. <laughs> it's just, these are, these worlds don't collide. Imagine yeah. if people start going into that movie. It's like, oh my god, what are these weird creatures? Yes. What we need is a movie that is like cars, but death racing. The, like the cars turn evil. The cars from, I don't know the, their names. I've never seen them. Before. Lightning but McQueen. Lightning McQueen and, turns evil know. and hit him in that weird Doc, pickup truck Doc. who's voiced by the guy from Cheers. They go around and they freaking kill people. That's what this game is. And at number four, we have Aristea. It's the far distant future, and humans have found a new and deadly sport to entertain the masses, Aristea. In Aristea, players control a team of four characters, which they pit against another team in the Hexadome Arena. To score, characters need to occupy scoring regions when the round ends. But be careful, other characters can push you out of those regions, or worse, take you out of the action. Combat is fun, it's easy. You just need to take a character's unique attack action and roll the suggested dice. You can even perform special abilities called switches that provide more depth to the combat. So Aristea is another game that's not really a war game at all. Because Aristea is a sport game, it's a sport. It's a futuristic death sport, but it's a sport. Actually, nobody dies in Aristea. You just get injured and you sit off the sidelines. So it's like American football. But People it's... get injured in the sidelines. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I guess so, well, actually, yeah. Actually, it's more like soccer. Like... Yeah, but then they're faking it. They're always faking it. Out of all the games on this list, I would say this one has the lowest model count because you're talking about like four characters and they're all like really unique. A lot of times when you play games mm -hmm. that have like miniatures, sort of like, I don't know if you guys, Zombicide, Zombicide's really play. You've never played Zombicide because Zombicide sucks and it'll never come to this house. But essentially, <laughs> Zombicide is just like, it's a little, like not a miniature game, but it has miniatures and like, they run these Kickstarters that have tons and tons of characters and all the characters kind of feel exactly the same. You know, they have like slight deviations on their abilities, whereas Aristea managed to have like all these different characters and it's like, as it's light, it's not as light as Zombicide, but it's light enough that it doesn't feel overwhelming. And all the characters still oh. feel unique, and which is interesting and fun. 
So like you, each one has their own like team and everything. Yeah, you have your team of four. Fun. Plus it has Kung Fu Panda in it. Yeah, it's, it's Disney, don't sue. It's, it does, Corvus Belly doesn't actually, it's not Kung Fu Panda, but he's just a panda that knows Kung Fu. We'll call him Karate Panda <laughs> to avoid litigation. <laughs> <laughs> he's Karate Panda. This sounds like a very strong contender. Yeah, and it's anime inspired too. All the arts anime. I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. It's really fun. It's super easy. And it just kind of like, in a sense, kind of feels more like a board game, which I think is good when you're talking about introductory miniature games. Aristea. And at number three, we have Frostgrave. Among the frozen ruins and treacherous hazards of an ancient city, powerful wizards battle to discover treasures of the fallen empire. The locals call it snowy wasteland Frostgrave. The game of Frostgrave has players control wizards and their apprentices, forming groups to raid the ancient city. Combat is simple and fun and lets you chuck some 20-sided dice and get your hands on some new gear, abilities, and loot at the end of the game so you can get even more powerful for your next game. So Frostgrave is a game that has been recommended to us by, I don't know if you've seen all the comments. There's been a lot of comments there. Frostgrave, Frostgrave. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of comments that we can get. We're a small channel. There's a good amount and for good reason. What is a good reason? It's a <laughs> dead spot. I'll tell you. It's a really good introductory miniature game. Because again, like like Gaslands, you know, you know, there's no specific miniatures you have to buy, so we can use whatever cool crap we have. Or this could be a good excuse that we could run our 3D printer and just start printing. Up, like you could just go online and just pick. Wait, like wait. I like that. What What do you mean? How can we use our 3D printer for this? Well, because the miniatures, there's no official store that I know of. I, it, they, the game sort of encourages you to just use whatever you want. So you're saying I can use my Kung Fu Panda as a wizard? You can use the Karate Panda. <laughs> You cheap Chinese knockoff karate panda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll for sure. I'll do Chinese too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but I mean to avoid like, you know, those like things you see at the dollar store where it's like not Spider-Man, it's like boy spider, <laughs> boy arachnid or something, you know? That's what it's I like. I see, I yeah. see. But yeah, it's a really great game. Um, and I think there's a new expansion called like Wild Woods or something, which has a bunch. And, and that's one thing I like with Frost Wave too, is that it implements certain terrain features. Because I find a lot of miniature games, the, the train's kind of boring. It usually just acts as like, I'm hiding behind this cover. Whereas in Frostgrave, it can like, the train hurts you. It could be, huh? yeah, you could be walking around and you slip on ice or an avalanche could come or freaking snowman can attack you. I don't know, something. And, uh, and I know this could be a sort of drawback to new players. It's also persistent. So the what game. So what that means is that the game that you play today would carry on tomorrow and the next time no, you play. No, it's not like a legacy game. But, uh, it's like a legacy game. If you're familiar with board games, it's like a, a legacy game. It's a until you said that. No, that's cool. Because like that means like you level up. There's progression. Yeah, you get stronger. Yeah, but what if I don't level up? And my character you're gonna level sucks. up. So then uh, if it's then like you D &D, suck, and you, you need to reevaluate. You have to yourself. bring the same guy back again the next time. I'm like, oh, my mistake in my first time playing is like. Not gonna well, haunt can, me for life. No, you can just redo stuff. Cause, cause you are supposed to pick a, like a specific school of magic, but like a lot of miniature games that it like broadens out and lets you do other stuff. So you can cast spells from other, from other, other schools of magic. And you get cool fat loot that you get to roll on a table for. So at the end of the game you roll, but you roll and you find out like, oh sweet, I got this sword of killing. <laughs> Plus two. The Chinese knockoff of Excalibur. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Frostgrave. And at number two, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Marvel Crisis Protocol takes the well of Marvel Universe and captures it perfectly in this miniature game. The game plays relatively quickly and has players fighting over various objectives like rescuing hostages or capturing alien artifacts. Combat is quick and fun and involves chucking lots of dice and utilizing unique and interesting powers that each character possesses. It really does feel like you're in a Marvel movie. Marvel Crisis Protocol is also a game that we've talked quite a bit on this channel because I really love it and I think it's a really fantastic game for new miniature gamers. Primarily because it's in a universe where everybody's familiar with that universe. That's true. If you've seen the X-Men cartoon, you know, you just didn't see the X-Men cartoon and you know what Wolverine does, you know what Cyclops does. So when you read those powers, it's not like, what? You, know, you understand. You mean everybody else hasn't read the comics? Well, if you haven't read the comics, comics, you know, maybe you watch the movies, whatever, whatever see, like, media you Most took. people like have seen the movies or Probably. seen the, t the TV shows out now. Yeah, but yeah, Marvel Crisis Protocol, it's really good. Like I said, all the characters are really do easy to understand. It's a dice chucker, which I'm not a huge fan of dice chuckers, but for whatever reason, just feels more fun. No, you game. love it. Not when I'm chuck. I don't. Yeah, it depends. It depends. You love. You get so into it. But I think the only reason you'd ever say that he's like not a huge dice fan is because he has such bad luck with. Goals. I do have bad luck. It's really good for beginners because the miniatures, if you want to paint, because the miniatures are really large. Um, they're I think they're like 
35 millimeters. Usually miniature games so are 20 fight each other? millimeters. Well, no, I don't, I don't know why they made the miniatures so large, but at least it's, it's, it's funner to paint because the faces are bigger, so you're not like... Ugh. Is this like a cartoon version of them? Like the, no. Like bubble head? No, like it's a huge... no. Oh, okay, so pro miniature gaming tip. What that is called is called uh, um, heroic scale. So whenever bobblehead you- Bobblehead scale? Yeah, basically, it is bobblehead scale. And it's basically like, it's really popular, especially in historic games. I don't know why. I think people like painting the larger heads, but it, it's usually like people the- People just uh, like bobbleheads. Yeah, like I find Warhammer to be a bit too heroic scaly. It feels very bobbleheady. Does Make, it? Yeah, yeah, it's a little, it's heroic scale. Yeah, those space marines, they got some big old craniums. Ah, we're under fire! The other thing I really like with Marvel Crisis Protocol is the way you interact with terrain. I think I think it's really boring in miniature games when you're just kind of like, I'm hiding behind this, whatever. But in this game, you can like manipulate the terrain. So you huh? can, yeah, you can have Hulk just like pick something up and just like a car and just chuck it at somebody. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, in my game, we I have- I you meant more like Storm make like the, I don't know, the Thunder Storm destroy the trees and stuff like that. Sure, you could do that too. Like chuck trees at people. In my game, I have a little terrain piece that I painted up. It's it's Stan Lee sitting on a park bench, and every I time, that. I yeah, that. And every time we play, every time we play with my friend, we all he gets thrown, he gets thrown at somebody. Stan Lee gets chucked at somebody. It is a guaranteed. I'm so sorry. Sorry, Stan. Rest in peace. Excelsior! <laughs> and at number one, we have Moonstone, my favorite gateway miniature game. I'm not surprised at all by yeah. this. Moonstone is a light fairy tale fantasy themed skirmish game that takes place in a whimsical world that, that feels like it was ripped straight from the fairy tales you remember as a kid. With all the charm and character you'd expect, combat is very creative and feels like a, a neat little mini game that sees players trying to outsmart one another and anticipate what card will be played. Players fight over moonstones, and whoever's collected the most moonstones at the end is the winner. So moonstone is just—it's just a great game all around, and I'm so shocked that it's just not as popular as I would think it would be. It's just an interesting theme, you know, like most games. I'm gonna rag on Warhammer, but most games kind of feel like a 14 year old, an edgy 14 year old's fever dream. Like grimdark and all like, oh, it's so moody and uh. Sometimes that stuff is great, it is. But then sometimes it's, it's just so obnoxious. And so it's kind of fun to have a game like Moonstone, which is like, it's all whimsical, it's all fantasy based, you know, it kind of feels like you're in like a storybook. Isn't Moonstone the one with the little pig? Yeah, there's like, well, there's funny stuff. So like, there's one character called Doug the Flatulent <laughs> and he, he's a little goblin character and he he's an armor and he rides on a pug and the pug farts and the fart can <laughs> damage people. It's silly, it's silly, but a lot of the characters you know, like that. That's I, 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 they probably based stuff of your farts. Yeah. It could, yeah. When I, a lot of protein, protein stinky, it is what it is. But like, you know, it, it's just, it's just a fun game. It's a fun game and it's just a theme you don't see a lot. And it's a lot, of, it's, it's really great to paint too. Cause it's all like very colorful. Yeah, again, I don't have, I mean, I don't have any experience. Well, that's it, why it's but, like, yeah. But I've seen your mentors on them. And I remember specifically the little mama pig one. The she's not a pig, she's, she's a gnome. Okay, sure, she'll play <laughs> big. Uh, but she has like a little like chicken on her plate. I'm like, this is such a cute miniature. As long as you paint them like, I don't know, not the wizard, not the cape, not the like, They have character. Know. There's something to them, but you it, know? Yeah, it's so charming. It, it, it's one of the first miniatures I saw of yours that felt like art. Like genuinely, like, this is like art. Yeah. It's so pretty. Like the characters look like they tell a story. Just, yes. just the look of them. You know, it's not just like, oh, here's a, a buff dude looking all angry. Oh, okay. No, the characters look like you could just look at them and say like, I know what his history is. I know what his backstory is. It does look that's interesting part of the fun. and it's, charming. And that's why I think it's, that's another reason why I think it's one of the best introductory miniature games because it's so welcoming. It's something you could see on a table and people just instantly, it doesn't matter. If, yeah, it, it, no, it doesn't matter if it's like you're into the war stuff or, or if, you know, war doesn't interest you. Everybody's drawn to Moonstone when it's on the table. And I really like the the combat in Moonstone because it can involve bluffing, which I think you don't you definitely no. don't see in a dream. Yeah, you can lie to people. You can lie to people. You can kind of say, be honest. No, don't be honest in Moonstone. <laughs> but when you cast a spell, basically both both you and your opponent draw cards, and you have your cards, and, and they have their cards, and you you are looking for a certain number and a certain color, and you can stay that you have it, but you know they you might not you might actually bluff. And it's really, it's really well done. I kind of like that. I hate it, but I like it. And, and the melee combat's really done, well done because it feels like an actual duel. You know, I'm not just tucking dice. 
you know, I'm thinking, I'm in your head thinking like, okay, I think she's gonna play a high high guard. So I wanna make sure I attack low. And it's just like, yeah. It's What's this really fencing? Well like, it is, it does feel like a fencing. Your little pigs like are gnomes are fencing. <laughs> but it feels more interactive than just like, oh, I rolled five successes. Successes. Oh, you rolled four defenses? Okay, well, I hit you for one HP. It's a really great game, and I think it, it's, it's, it deserves the top spot. And I really think it deserves more recognition and more talk than what I think it gets. Everything is great. The miniatures are beautiful. The, the combat's unique and refreshing. It plays quickly. Like, you can get a game of Moonstone done in, like, under 90 minutes. Easy. Even with a new player. Easy. It's just such a great game. So that was the top five best introductory miniature games. Which one of all of those speaks to you? They all speak to me. Okay. In different languages and some some you, sweet hopefully some you can not, some, some you can understand, I hope. Not all of them you know, resonate with me. Yeah. And I would say I definitely have a strong top two. Okay, um, what are they? I think I first want to like kind of give out the consolation prizes. Okay, uh, sure. Tell uh, us what the losers are. Go. Everyone gets a medal. <laughs> yeah, participation trophies. Exactly. Millennials. Uh, yes, fans, you were great. Um, good effort, but I think I only want to play Gaslands in a big group. I don't think it's- In a party setting. That exactly. makes sense. Get out of here, Gaslands. You're a party animal. You're not welcome here. Get out of here. Yeah, I'm not just in a one-on-one -on -one date with you. I, I love you though. I think I'd invite you to a- a yeah. um, What do you call <laughs> I was gonna say Kekker and <laughs> Orchid. Okay, okay, good Yeah, you know. Kekker. <laughs> um, and up next, I have to say Marvel, mm. not today. And I think that's kind of me because I'm a big DC fan. So I can't, you know, kind of portray that. I can't portray Justice League that way. I guess that's fair. All right, get out of here, Marvel. We've had enough with your freaking mediocre movies. And everyone loves Marvel anyway, so I'm like, you know, I don't. I don't. It, it's like uh, maybe I'm a still teenager at heart or something. I'm just like, I don't want to. I don't think Warhammer's everyone off their plans. I'm so sorry, but I think I'd have to pass on Frostgrave as well. The one biggest reason for that is mm. the fact that it's a legacy game. That's fair. I would never recommend a legacy game to a uh, board game noob. What's next? Okay, and so the top two what's left is Aristega and Moonstone. Okay. I think it has to go to Moonstone. Okay. I think, I think Moonstone is the one that we're gonna go for. Um, and I think that's mainly because you sold me on it. Okay. I'm excited for the fantasy world that the miniatures are very beautiful. It's a very different concept. And I like that it's almost like miniature games within the mini game. We're like, you know, using cards for like the combat and different types of actions. I think it sounds very exciting and interesting. Yeah, Aristea to me like, oh, sounds like such a great game. Um, and I love it's more structured as well. But I think Moonstone just takes the cake. And that about wraps it up. Yeah. That's where we'll go from there. This this has been part three of my minute journey into miniature gaming. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big old thumbs up. I've said it in a very long time, actually. Yeah. Um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And Absolutely. Hit the bell four. button for notifications. And I, I don't know the whole spiel. Like and comment. Just subscribe. Yeah. And we'll see you in the next one. Absolutely. Bye. Bye.